The next part of this lecture is an introduction to acid and base reactions. It's just an introduction in case you're getting to this material in the lab. We'll have more detail in a few more lectures. For Bronsted acid base reactions, writing the net reaction is a simple matter of filling in the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. For example, if we have hydrofluoric acid and the nitrite ion, Clearly, the one with the hydrogen is our acid, and clearly the nitrite ion, which doesn't have a hydrogen, is our base. So to write the net reaction, we just need to take our acid and write the conjugate base, which means we're going to deprotonate or remove a hydrogen atom and make the charge lower by one. So hydrofluoric acid becomes fluoride. For the base, we simply need to write the conjugate acid, which means we protonate or add a hydrogen atom and make the charge greater by one. So nitrite becomes nitrous acid. You notice all we have done is moved an H1 plus. Hydrofluoric acid and fluoride are conjugates and nitrite and nitrous acid are also conjugates. Here is another example. Clearly, the sulfate ion must be the base, and the hydronium ion must be the acid. So for the base, we write the conjugate acid. We are only moving one proton, so we will protonate, which means we add a hydrogen atom and make the charge greater by one. And for our acid, we deprotonate the water to make the conjugate base, which means we remove a hydrogen and make the charge less by one. Once again, we have moved a hydrogen ion. Sulfate and hydrogen sulfate are conjugates, and hydronium and water are also a conjugate acid-base pair. What about the acid-base reaction that occurs when sodium acetate is dissolved in water? Acetates will be soluble in water, so we'll get sodium ion and acetate ion. Acetate is going to serve as our base. We don't need to include the sodium ion in this reaction because we are writing a net acid-base reaction, so we only want the materials that actually react. Water is going to serve as our acid, and now it's just a matter of filling in the conjugate acid-base pair. We will protonate the acetate to make acetic acid and deprotonate the water to make hydroxide. So here is one of your student reactions. Complete the acid-base reaction shown above. Here is another one for you. Please complete this acid-base reaction. Now things can obviously get more complicated. What if you were given amphiprotic species? Hydrogen carbonate and hydrogen phosphate are amphiprotic. They can act as acids or bases. So when you fill in this reaction, how do you figure out which one is the acid? In another few lectures, we will discuss the equilibrium constants for acids, and you'll know how to finish this reaction. You'll know that hydrogen carbonate serves as the acid for this reaction, and hydrogen phosphate serves as the base. So remember, we take our acid and we deprotonate it to make the conjugate base. And we take our base and we protonate it with just one hydrogen ion to make our conjugate acid. Here's another example. What if you were to add vinegar to a solution that contained the cyanide ion? you might have the possibility of making hydrogen cyanide dissolved in water, which could escape into the atmosphere. Hydrogen cyanide, if you're not aware of it, is the material that often causes people to asphyxiate. It's a very dangerous gas, one that I have actually been exposed to, and I'll tell you the story. I used to work for a polymer company, and they made acetone cyanohydrin. This involved adding hydrogen cyanide gas to acetone. It was a reversible reaction. So often, the hydrogen cyanide could leave the acetone and go out into the atmosphere. 
It turns out that hydrogen cyanide often smells like almonds. So when I was visiting this plant, part of the entry to the plant was passing the safety quiz. So you had to watch a video and pass the safety quiz. And the other part of it was that they wanted to put you in a booth and expose you to a small amount of hydrogen cyanide gas to see if you could detect the smell. About one-third of the population can. I am part of the two-thirds of the population that cannot detect it. So yes, I once stepped into a booth and voluntarily exposed myself to hydrogen cyanide gas. So back to our actual reaction. Let me write the equilibrium expression for this. All of these are aqueous materials, so we have products raised to the first power over reactants raised to the first power. If the equilibrium constant is large, we should leave the room because hydrogen cyanide gas will be formed. But if the equilibrium constant is very small, we'll probably be okay. And when we finish with the KA lecture, you'll know. Do we stay or do we go?